30 minutes from President Biden's first evening speech on a major policy initiative of his presidency. And it is not about any of the top worries that the American people say they think about every night. Good evening. I'm Leland Vitter. The president moved back departure for a long weekend in Delaware and will address the nation. The legislation he'll propose is a long list of traditional Democratic talking points on guns. One of the things we expect, a potential ban on assault rifles without explaining exactly what an assault rifle is. The bills he's proposed and the bills so far working their way through the House and Senate sponsored by Democrats are unlikely at best. In fact, it's nearly impossible to think that they are going to pass. They will, however, force Republicans to take some very uncomfortable votes. And that explains so much about what is about to happen at the White House and over the next couple of weeks. Think about this right now from the White House's perspective or more specifically from Ron Klain's perspective. He is the White House Chief of Staff, whose job is in serious, serious jeopardy right now. You can see there the president's approval numbers head down as gas prices go up, his approval numbers go down, his disapproval numbers go up. If you're Ron Klain, you need a win, any win. And you need more than anything to deflect attention from your bosses 40% approval numbers and 50 plus percent disapproval numbers. On the economy, it's even worse. Gas prices hit a new record. They hit a new record every day. In fact, after weeks of announcements about the Strategic Petroleum Reserve and ethanol, and then taking on big oil, then there were announcements about new oil leases, and, and, and. All the administration said to lower gas prices but gas prices keep hitting records. And the president has now simply stopped talking about them. Then there's the baby formula shortage. Baby formula shortage is something that most Americans never even contemplated a year ago. First, the White House said they were surprised by the crisis. Then they said they'd been working on it for months. Then came the Defense Production Act that meant everything was gonna be fine in just a couple of weeks because they were doing everything possible. Now, they declared a success because United Airlines offered to fly some formula for free. An airline flying formula from Europe to help a baby formula shortage in America is now a win for the Biden White House. Free flights for baby formula. That is a presidential success. Most Americans remember when we sent formula to other countries. We did it routinely. That's just who America was. The White House, our president, our country, did not have to beg European allies for their baby formula. To be clear, those two problems, rising prices and the baby formula shortage, disproportionately affect Mr. Biden's core base, middle and lower income women. Let's think of some of the other problems. Another record of illegal immigrants on the border, including 4,000 people who came across this weekend in Del Rio, Texas. This is the tweet from the chief border patrol agent there in Del Rio. Del Rio one border patrol sector in one state in one weekend. 4,000 people came across. That's the size of even America's biggest high schools. In addition to that, in addition to the nearly half of the 4,000 that were likely released into the United States, the border patrol counted 1,600 gotaways. That means 1,600 people came into the United States. The border patrol couldn't catch them, couldn't find them, and they disappeared. Now, you move on to another problem, exploding crime in America's cities. Obviously, there were hundreds of murders over the Memorial Day weekend. In addition, record high fentanyl overdoses. In fact, fentanyl, not mass shootings, are the leading cause of death for Americans under the age of about 35. Rising prices on everything, in addition to gas shortages, on basic American products, in addition to baby formula. I could go on with this list, but the president's speaking soon. And he's not going to touch on any of those issues because the solutions don't work for him or for Democrats politically. That's not opinion. It's just fact. It doesn't help the White House to talk about these problems. Just look at where talking about them has gotten this White House. 45, 40% approval rating, 35% approval rating on the economy. The news cycle and media have given Democrats and Mr. Biden a political lifeline. And he is grabbing onto it tonight. He can appear presidential. He's going to put Republicans in a corner. He's going to appease his base. Here's a preview of what we will hear tonight. 
When in God's name are we going to stand up to the gun lobby? For God's sake, we have to have the courage to stand up to the industry. Where in God's name is our backbone to have the courage to deal with it and stand up to the lobbies? When in God's name we do what we all know in our gut needs to be done? When in God's name will we do what needs to be done? It sets up the perfect rhetorical nightmare for Republicans. Either you are for banning assault rifles or you are pro mass shootings. Either you are with Mr. Biden or you don't care about kids being safe in school. The Republican response to this is highly predictable. A version of Charleston Heston, you can pry it from my cold, dead hands. Here's Congressman Greg Stube during a House hearing earlier. Don't let them fool you that they are not attempting to take away your ability to purchase handguns. They're using the magazine ban to do it. This gun would be banned. This gun would be banned under this bill. This gun would be banned. I hope the, under the gun is not bill. loaded. I'm at my house. I can do whatever I want with my guns. Obviously, there is zero chance of him compromising on anything. Seriously. Buy 10 AR 15s on your 18th birthday, and Congressman Stube doesn't really mind. He just doesn't see any red flags there. At the same time, Democrats are equally unreasonable. Democrats propose the Protecting Our Kids Act, and who could be against that? Who could be against protecting our kids? And that's the position Democrats want to put Republicans in. And then we look at the poison pill. Simply possessing a large capacity magazine becomes illegal. Banning large magazines in effect, as we just heard, bans many guns, and merely possessing something as a crime brings us so many steps closer to confiscation. Of course Republicans are going to be against it. And that's largely the point. Make Republicans come out against protecting our Kids Act. This really isn't the politicians' fault. In fact, it's probably mostly cable news' fault. Just think about the past month. If you watch Fox News, mass shootings will be solved by having strong male role models in homes. MSNBC will tell you, just ban assault rifles, and every child will now be safe. Previous successful efforts in this country to ban firearms. So you, you know that you cannot have uh, a Tommy gun anymore or a machine gun anymore because that was successfully outlawed. There's something called the National Firearms Act that actually used a tax on those weapons um, that didn't even touch the Second Amendment issues. They spent last week telling us that the lunatic who shot up the grocery store in Buffalo was some kind of right wing activist. He was a mental patient, obviously, as his diary made clear. He was also a racist lunatic. The real solution, or even a step in the right direction, requires compromise. For example, Republicans could okay raising the age limit to buy weapons, and Democrats could agree to federal prosecution of gun crimes that were dropped by woke DAs. Neither of those are going to happen. In the end, as we will see tonight from President Biden, and we will also see it from the next few weeks, over the next few weeks, from Republicans and Democrats as well, these issues, like immigration, like abortion, like so many more of the big problems in America, are much more useful as a cable news talking point than a policy on the way to keeping all of us safe. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.